Welcome to SBG TV News for Wednesday, November 8th, 2023. I'm Rochelle Batiste with the details. SVG's Minister of Tourism, Culture and Sustainable Development, Carlos James, is in London, the UK, attending the World Travel Market, where destination SVG is said to be creating a buzz as the next exciting adventure for Caribbean travel. For those attending World Travel Market 2023 this week, it's a timely opportunity to showcase the diverse attributes of the region and continue to strengthen efforts to increase airlift to the Caribbean. The WTM connects stakeholders through events across four continents, creating the best opportunities for travel industry professionals to connect, learn and do business. On the sidelines at the event, Minister James explained why London and Europe are critical markets for many Caribbean destinations, including Destination SVG. Um, we, we're expanding and, and, and bringing more people to our destination and that's one of the reasons why we're at World Travel Market. And what is the forecast for the winter, for the winter season for St. Vincent? Oh, the winter Grenadines? season for St. Vincent is looking really good. Um, mm -hmm. The Grenadines, are, all of the hotels, the villas are, are, are buzzing with activity um, in terms of their bookings. On mainland, we're building out hotels and, and the traditional boutique style hotels, which are traditionally on the mainland. They're looking really good with their numbers. And, you know, I can't wait to see um, what, what the start of the season looks like for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. What's next? What's new novel in the destination? What's, be, what's been developed in 2023? What's new for 2024? In terms of the development, we have some exciting things in store for St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Uh, March 27th, we open officially a Sandals Resort on mainland St. Vincent. It's 301 room capacity. We're currently building out the Holiday Inn Express and we start the construction of a Marriott um, Resort next year. We also continue the expansion of Royal Mill and Black Sands facilities. They're already on the construction and we'll ramp up their, their construction into next year. So we're really adding room stock within the next two, three years. We're hoping to add another, um, over another thousand rooms to St. Vincent and the Grandines. And a lot of the, the travel agencies, the airlines are excited about the des destination. And the buzzword is St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Um, discovering the, the multi-island destination which has this uniqueness to it. And it's the, most, the Caribbean's most diverse destination. And everyone is talking about St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Caribbean you're looking for. On how SVG has recovered post-pandemic in regards to the European market, Minister James said they have seen some exciting numbers and are hoping to see an increase in the numbers even further. Um, next year we host the ICC T20 World Cup in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and naturally a lot of persons from the UK are going to travel over so we're, we're expecting to see our number, numbers um, increasing um, coming from this source market. And are you participating in any other activities in the UK other than World Travel Market? We will have our normal road shows um, taking place. We're a number of activities with, with Lotus, our partners here, as well as our uh, UK Director of Sales, Natasha. She's on the ground and making arrangements for St. Vincent and Grenadines. It's really an exciting opportunity for us and um, it's an amazing work from all of our team here in the diaspora and what we're doing really is, is getting persons um, focused on destination St. Vincent, the exciting new destination everyone is talking about, the most diverse Caribbean destination. Meanwhile, Virgin Atlantic is expected to offer three flights per week from St. Vincent and the Grenadines to the United Kingdom from January 2024. Presently, the airline offers flights on Wednesdays and Sundays to London Heathrow. In a news release, the airline said from January 8, 2024, Barbados will receive double daily flights for the first time ever from London Heathrow, along with four weekly flights from Manchester. Virgin Atlantic's interregional offering will also bring three flights per week from Grenadines Nada and three flights per week from St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Meanwhile, Liat is 
advising its customers that due to unscheduled maintenance issues, there will be a disruption to its regular flight schedule. The airline says the issues have caused it to suspend its current schedule as it works to resolve the issues and put its aircraft back into schedule. However, due to logistical and supply chain issues, it does not have a concrete deadline for the return to its regular schedule. As a consequence of the maintenance work, Liat says several flights in the coming weeks have been cancelled. The airline says while it, it acknowledges that the disruption will cause a major inconvenience to its customers at this time, the safety of passengers, crew and ground staff are of utmost importance and that it is currently exploring all available options to assist passengers at this time. The airline sells its reservations call centers currently contacting affected passengers to assist with their travel needs and that it is also working diligently to expedite the maintenance process so the airline can resume its regular schedule which is essential to connectivity in the region. Passengers are asked to monitor their emails and Liat's social media platforms for updates. Liat says it sincerely apologizes for any inconvenience caused by this scheduled disruption and looks forward to resuming service soon. In other news now, we hear that work on the Kingston Port Modernization Project is approximately 40% completed as of the end of October. This is according to Acting Prime Minister Montgomery Daniel, who provided an update of the estimated physical progress of the project this morning on NBC Radio. The estimated physical progress of work as at the end of October was approximately 40% complete. The design packages, they're well in advance and they're well over 90% complete. Um, it is important to note, of course, that I'm going work, particularly on the main administrative building, the structural frame yeah. is almost 100% erected. The laying of the metal desk on each floor is complete. And there is ongoing back filling and compaction work on the wrong floor. So really, I mean, the administrative buildings are really already showing up. Later. Minister Daniel Fudder added that work on the 620 million EC dollars project is continuing in the final quarter of the year with sea wall piling installation and the ground improvement work. And you also have the foundation work on the container freight station. That stage station building the work they are doing and they're doing well. The sheet pile installation along with the T wall. That is adjacent to the fish market, you know, if you, yes. if you um, are well in touch with the job of the That wall is, the work there is ongoing. And uh, the overall total sheet pile installation that you spoke about in front of the driving of the pile, mm -hmm. but that's the wall, that is 26% complete. So there's some more work to be done on, on, on that key wall. Also on radio today, Minister Daniel said that Cabinet will meet tomorrow, Thursday, November 9th, to begin the budgetary discussion for the 2024 fiscal year. Today's Cabinet, and of course, we have a heavy agenda for Cabinet this morning. Uh, tomorrow at 9 a.m., Cabinet meets, of course, to begin the budgetary discussion for 2024, so that, as you see, the work of the government continues even though the prime minister is absent on the ground so but of course guidance is always thought when matters are beyond collectively or, or um, whatever the, the output but by and large work of the government continues and we are doing just that 
The 2023 edition of the Vilnik National Science and Technology Fair began on Monday, November 6th at the Methodist Church Hall in capital Kingston. The one-week science and technology fair sponsored by Vilnik has been hosted by the Ministry of Education under the theme Imagination. Students from primary and secondary schools are the main participants in the fair. However, members of the public are encouraged to participate. The objectives of the fair are to improve an opportunity for collaboration among students and teachers to focus attention on future scientists and other science-related careers and to encourage students to become involved in science. In an interview with SRG TV News, Education Officer Juanita King said the 2023 Science and Technology Fair have seen a great level of participation from schools across the country with an overall total of 80 primary schools. King is encouraging the general public to visit the Science and Technology Fair to observe the various projects prepared by the students. We are very happy to see some new time um, schools participating for the first time in this um, fair. Um, we have a wide variety of projects coming from the five strands of the science curriculum in the primary schools and we have a good representation from a number of our students. The students are excited to be here. They're excited to showcase what they've been doing in science in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. They are excited to match the theme of the fair this year, which is imagination. And we're seeing, we're definitely seeing some application of that um, theme in their projects. So on Thursday, we are going to be having the open to public day, so I would invite members of the public to come down and view some of the exhibits. We have a very bright future here in terms of our primary school submission. So come on down and see what the students have presented. And students from the Beckway Seventh-day Adventist Primary School explain their girl power projects, which they say seek to make their bathroom facility more welcoming. As part of their projects, the students created an odor eliminator and scent boosters for the toilet bowls. Well, uh, bathrooms were not the most welcoming place in our school, so we decided to invent a special scent booster that would make our bathroom smell sweeter. The first time we came about this idea, we had to gather the materials needed. Like for example, blue soap, soap powder, fabric um, softener, toilet bowl, water, and empty milk box, empty metal cans, measuring cups, black cloth, and buttons. So the first thing that we were going through with to make them. Finally, we collected the materials needed. Blue soap, fabric softener, soap powder, water, wooden spoon bowl, grater, pot, and measuring cups like listed in the material. We started by grating the bar of blue soap in the bowl. We then poured the grated soap in the pot. Next, we measured one and a half cups of America Fresh lavender soap powder and added it to the pot. We then measured and added two and a half cups of fabric softener to the pot. Half of fresh blue and loose toilet blocks were also grated and added. Finally, we measured and added one cup of water to the pot. Then, when we, then we, we then placed the pot on the stove. Our teacher assisted with the lighting and monitoring of the stove. Once on the stove, we all began to we began to stir all the ingredients in the pot together. We continued stirring as the temperature increased in the pot. The solid iron began to melt and a sweet fragrance was released, as all the materials were now combined and became one. The stirring was not done only to combine the materials, but also to prevent them from sticking to the bottom of the pot. As we allowed the mixture to boil, we began to notice it thickening after about five to seven minutes. Okay, that's enough. Thicken. We poured it into like these tin can things and left it to harden overnight. And our results was these. Well, we decided to use these because there were actually two different types that we made. So we tinkered around with them by doing a survey. Having successfully completed two scent boosters, the students and teachers of the Beckwith Seventh-day Adventist Primary School participated in a survey to get persons to provide feedback on their favorite scent. So approximately 53 students who participated, about 70% of the student population. 17 students went for B, but 41 went for A. 
And then we thought that we had enough it further into self-care and personal hygiene. So we decided to make the self-care pouches. We used them from leftover scraps of Treadworks and may and a parent that also is a worker of Treadworks sewed them together. And these things we contain different things like wipes, Vaseline and hand sanitizer and also more. All for the self-care. Now that we had made a sweet, so these are for the toilet tanks, and this is actually for the bathroom, and we hope that we can create a sweet smelling bathroom. The National Science Fair will conclude on Friday, November 10th, with a prize given ceremony at 1.30 p.m. <laughs> Now we hear that with the country's homicide count, now at 47, opposition leader Dr. Godwin Friday said violence and crime in St. Vincent and the Grenadines is a social problem resulting from poor management of the criminal justice system, which can be reversed. The opposition leader, who was speaking on the issue on radio yesterday, said the problem will be able to be addressed under an NDP government by new public policies and political directors. It's one that is is reversible and must be reversed. We can't. I mean, last year we broke a record, 42 killings in this country. Now we are up to 47. Where is it going to stop? And we must say that this is, um, this is just inevitable. And it's not just the fact that you're having people, a lot of young people, who are being killed. Uh, you know, some would say killing one another. But the point is people are dying. But it is also the way in which these things are happening in public places, in places where, you know, other persons um, are who may not be in any way related to the persons involved directly in the incident are present. Or you have persons like, say, for example, our friend Doris McIntosh, her husband, going home from work, you know, and um, he is shot to death. I don't think that in his entire life that he ever thought that when he passes from this world, that is something that would, that's the way he would go out. The opposition leader said as the crime situation in the country gets worse, there is no sense of urgency or serious concern by the government in dealing with the matter. Well, listen, people have, you, you can't just round up people um, and, and take them off the street. You have to have evidence, you have to have um, proper safeguards. Some countries have done it. But they've, they've modified their laws to allow them to indefinitely remove people from the streets who they feel are, are, are crime figures? The, 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 I think the first thing that we have to do, really, is to get to the root cause of it. I mean, everybody, you know, that's that's really what it is, is, is to find ways in which persons who um, um, go into, as some would say, a life of crime, to have other opportunities at that point in their choice, in their life, when they're making these choices. And part of that has to do with the opportunities that are available for people now, young people. You have 41% of young people without work in this country. I mean, this has been the situation for the entire life of this um, present government. So you have to give uh, people first uh, opportunities. They have to know that there are uh, better choices. And to simply uh, say that it's just a few persons who are becoming involved in that and not take uh, a broader picture and take responsibility for uh, responsibility for addressing them is dropping the the ball it's basically it's 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 um reneging on your responsibility as i said the first responsibility is that for them to be in charge of the security of the country. Right. At a news conference on Monday, head of the Royal St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force, Enville Williams, acknowledged that there is a problem with gun violence in the country and has warned criminals they will be targeted. Of the 47 homicides committed for the year thus far, 43 have been classified as murders, of which 36 were committed by the use of illegal firearms and ammunition. The acting police commissioner said this is a problem not just for the police, but the whole society, and it must be addressed in a united fashion as he, re he reiterated an appeal for citizens, including the media, to partner with the police to deal with the issue. 
A large gathering turned out for the funeral service of former businessman Dexter Elvis Chance at the Chatelier playing field on Saturday, November 4, 2023. Chance, who had several run-ins with the law locally and in other neighboring countries, was gunned down in Grenada on September 11. He was found dead in his vehicle with multiple gunshot wounds in the St. George's area. Despite a manhunt immediately following his killing, the police in Grenada are yet to identify a suspect in the death of the 51-year-old. The Grenada Broadcasting Network, GBN, says the Community Relations Department of the Royal Grenada Police Force has not been forthcoming with information surrounding the investigation into Chance's killing. At a news conference following the shooting incident, head of the Criminal Investigations Department of the Royal Grenada Police Force, Superintendent Issa Pair, said investigators have not ruled out the possibility of cross-border criminal activities regarding the death of Chance. At his funeral service in his hometown of Chateaubelair, family, friends, residents and others came out in their numbers to pay their respect to Chance, who they say have touched many lives in the area. My boy, my love you, and I always will love you. Thank God for Jesus. And as I will come back further, I just want to tell you, oh God, let us not focus on the example we are dead. Someday I will get somewhere. Look up in the air, they never get you. Your drunk in the sea, they never get you. Man, shoot your drunk in the air, tell God have mercy. But next time we could dance and sing today to God with the glory. Great things Dexter done. And give his life to Christ. And this is my desire of me. Dexter was my very good friend. Was my best friend. And today, I come to pay tribute to Dexter. But God know that the things that Dexter have done to me and my family. I can't even describe it in the public. Dexter and myself was very, very close. Dexter will message me every morning and sometimes he will call me almost every day. Even in the middle of the night, he will call me. He will make fun of me by calling me Big Shot. And we will have whatever conversation. Dexter let come to me like a shock up the, up, up the wall just like when America loses, loses the Wall Street Center and 9-11. Which is the same day Dexter have lost his life on Monday 11th of September 2023. Many people had sudden and also shock after hearing the breaking news, including myself, which I couldn't believe when my daughter called me from overseas to give me the news. I'm Plata, but we had a mutual friend who lived in Central Leeward and I told him that Dexter and I were cousins and I didn't know him very well and he said that he was very close to Dexter and one day when Dexter was at his house he called me and that's how I met Dexter and I think I met him just twice and what I was really uh, moved by was the fact of how calm and cool he was. He wasn't in those interactions somebody who, who spoke a lot, he was just a very um, cool and calm guy. Dexter Chance was my dear brother and friend. He has touched my life. Just in the same way that he has touched many lives. When Dexter was at his lowest point, there were some so-called friends who let him down. <coughs> Nevertheless, when he rose again, he would send a helping hand to this, those same persons. Very forgiving, kind-hearted person he was. Up to the time of his death, Chance was living in Grenada, where he has been operating a car rental business. The St. Vincent and the Grenadines Teachers Union will kick off its annual celebrations for Teachers Solidarity Week this weekend with all members encouraged to attend church service as they, at their respective place of worship. The celebration activities this year are being held under the theme, The Significance of Workers' Active Participation, A Recipe for Success. On the SVGTU Speaks program, Industrial Relations Officer of the SVGTU, Andrew John, outlined the other activities to take place for the rest of the week, concluding on Friday, November 17th, with the annual March and Rally in capital Kingstown. Church service. On Monday, we have the memorial, the CW Prescott Memorial Lecture, and this will be done by Brother Adrian Woodlaw, a young budding lawyer. He would be doing the lecture. On Tuesday the 14th, we'll have our 
new members workshop and i'm pleased to announce that we have over 80 new members we may not be able to cater for all of them in this one workshop this year but we have over 80 new members we on uh, wednesday you have the agm and i'm appealing to our members to come out at that agm and have your say on thursday the 16th we have um, the president's award ceremony this will take place at the teachers union credit union headquarters and on the fifth the climax with the march and rally let us show strength let us show solidarity and we're not only in solidarity with those folks who so do this we're in solidarity with our members now who are going through so much to get promotion to get our conditions we have to be continuing this struggle so let us come out and join the march and rally that rally you tell me who will be at the rally the guest speaker brother president um, Jude Bartholomew from Grenada. From Grenada. Yeah. So he, the union has brought in Brother Bartholomew from Grenada. He will be the feature speaker at this event. Yeah. Noting that teachers of St. Vincent and the Grenadines are still not out of the woods with some of the challenges they face, John said that Teacher Solidarity Week of Activities is an important milestone for all teachers, stressing the importance for teachers to stick together with their union. Same thing yeah, now, yeah, after yeah. all this time, yeah. they still want to continue with that. In fact, our teachers were fired in November, close to our same salary. Time, same, time, yeah, same time, same time, same time, same time. So it's, it's really historic, you know, and the teachers' union marked this as a milestone for mm -hmm. us to remember because we, the struggle continues. Mm -hmm. we, we still must salute, we must salute Sister Yvonne Francis Gibson, now this is. We must salute all the leaders. Pajak was part of it. Pajak is still as militant <laughs> now. <Yeah. laughs> Pajak is still as militant now. Yeah. They have Joy Brown and his, her brother. Mm. Mike Brown. Mike Brown. Mm -hmm. Those were some of the outstanding leaders at the mm. time. Samuel when Garden. Was, right? Mm -hmm. And I can't remember all the leaders. No, I know you would know them more the than Wiley. You know? Right. Um, but these, and then some of the teachers, our own boy from Rosebank, um, mm. Hugh, Hugh Delbresh. Right. You know, Douglas. And, and all those guys were part of the and this uh, Simeon Green mm -hmm. and the list goes on and on. Right. Yeah. Stood up. So we need to see that kind of militancy.